What is up, players? It is Warboss Tay back up in this mug. Welcome to an unboxing and review of the Leviathan Siege Dreadnought from Forge World. I'm actually also going to assemble it just to, to uh, show you how it's going to look all built up because, you know, seeing a lot of pieces in a bag like this, it doesn't really do it justice until you see them all put together. So, uh, welcome to my video. These are all resin pieces from Forge World, and they come in this nice box, like a, a little cardboard box from Forge World and the first thing I saw when I opened it up was this uh, I guess assembly guide with this really cool 3D art on it and uh, it's just perfect because a uh, huge not a huge but uh, a complaint that I would have had from Forge World in the past is that I'm not really sure how to put their pieces together even after I clean them uh, it's really helpful to see where the pieces go how they glue together and you know if you've been doing these uh, miniatures, if you've been working with miniatures for any amount of time, you kind of learn and get your way through it. But yeah, when you first get started like I did, it's really helpful that they now have some instructions. So the first thing I noticed was the base is bigger than the Contemptor Dreadnought. So this is what it looks like for scale. And when it's all built up, I'll also show you how much larger the Leviathan is put right next to it. I guess I should have been expecting that, but I, for some reason, I really thought that it was uh, just a little bit bulkier. I didn't realize it would be taller and broader and just really beefier than the Contemptor, which in itself I thought was a little bit bigger than the Dreadnoughts that uh, Games Workshop usually make. So the most iconic thing about this Leviathan Seas Dread is the uh, pieces of the chest armor on either side that uh, are really, really... Uh, flat and and thick and they really show that it's a siege dreadnought. It's built to really um, Withstand a lot of punishment and just wade in there and deal out the damage. So these are Volkite Culverin I'm gonna be um, drilling some holes into those and putting some magnets in. These are the two uh, leg upper legs that pop into the hip section and this is the other side. It's nice that they put that interior detailing you see right there that's under the shoulder a lot of rivet marks and uh, things so that no matter how you pose your model you'll get a really nice uh, view of it with no matter where you're looking at it from you'll get a nice shot of the interior and all the inner workings. That was the uh, little missile bomb launcher thing on the top as well as knee pads. This is I think that's the crotch armor piece. Here's one foot, and I like how you can see on the other underside there's some ribbing, and on the top side you can see the armor plates overlap. Really, really good. This is the top of the torso piece, as well as a little part that goes on the back of the dreadnought. And these two are the shoulder pieces. Now, just like the Contemptor Dread, they don't come with the uh, parts that attach to the weapon options. That actually comes with the weapon options, so what I'm going to have to do is drill some holes and put those magnets in there. This is some leg armor here, and um, what I usually do is I put the magnets into those shoulder joints and then I just put like a flat headed nail or screw into whatever weapon option I have because if you put a magnet into the weapons as well as the shoulder pieces or the attaching pieces, like if I were to put small magnets into these flamethrower attachments that go on the chest, they would really pull very hard onto the magnets in the dreadnought. And this is the uh, um, bottom of the hip, with the crotch armor, I believe. And uh, so a good tip that I got from one of the workers at Game Castle here in California is that you put the magnets into the actual dreadnought, and for all of the options, you put flat-headed nails or screws. Um, drill into those weapon options using a pin vise or a drill, and then widen it a little bit using a hobby knife. This is the torso section where the helmet's gonna go in. And, uh, and then cut off the top of the nail so that you've only got like a tiny little bit of the nail that will slot into the hole as well as the flat of the screw. And there you go. These are the two back uh, exhausts twin exhausts and I'm so excited. So one more look at the Dreadnought as we go into the finished version. Kachow!
a day later, I built this sucker up and man, what a beefy model. I added some uh, sand and some cork to the base so that it'll match the rest of the Carcaridons. But I mean, any chapter you paint this guy in, he is going to be impressive on the table. Some adjustments is I put the uh, magnets into the two uh, shoulder joints right as well as uh, onto the bottom side of the chest so that we can um, switch in and switch out the Volkite culverins as well as the flamers and uh, you saw that little magnet that got put into the top for the missile launcher. So here I'm showing you the Volkite culverins, they pop in and uh, on the Volkite culverins as well as on the flamers I put those little nails. The good thing with working with nails too is that uh, because they've got the actual length of the nail you can uh, s drill and slot it into the piece it makes it a lot easier to really get a good uh, I guess a good um, bond in there when you super glue it rather than if you put a magnet in you super glue a magnet in a magnet is only so large and if the magnet is too strong of a pull to whatever it's being attracted to it could rip that magnet right out of the weapon as you can see I made the Leviathan Dreadnought to look as if he's taking a step forward, which makes him a little bit different from my Contemptor, which is kind of standing its ground in, in a kind of a come at me bro pose. And he's looking off to, the Leviathan is looking off to the left, whereas the Contemptor Dreadnought is kind of angled so that he's looking off to the right. And this uh, creates a little bit of a symmetry so that the models look just a little bit different, but at the same time they uh, do look unified which is going to be, of course, obviously through the paint job as well as the basing. And uh, so, the, yeah, just a little size comparison to a regular size Terminator. That's how big that Leviathan Siege Dread is. He is so beefy. You saw him next to the Contemptor. He is just a huge chunk of resin and rage and hashtag resin and rage. And I love it. So, hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. And hey, for all of you starting 8th edition, Leviathan, Siege, Dread in your favorite chapter's colors might be the thing to do. Hey, I'm going to put all of the information in the bottom as always. Thanks for watching and uh, join me for more videos on my channel. July Painting Challenge. Eh?